Let's talk about night vision for shit hits the fan or just civilian use or whatever. I used to sell night vision for a living. I used to build night vision devices, PVS 14s, PVS 7s, and dual tubes. I've owned more night vision than most people probably ever will. I don't have any at the moment because I needed that money for other shit and haven't been able to replace it yet. Whenever I do, I'm probably going to buy a PVS-7. And uh, for me, I like the PVS-7 because I'm used to not having depth perception in it and I can work with that. It gives me night vision in both eyes and it's pretty cheap. Is that the best night vision in the world? No. And for most people, I would suggest that you get dual tubes. And a lot of people will be like, well, those are expensive. Why would you suggest that? Well, for most of the shit that night vision is good for, either a PVS-14 handheld or weapon mounted will do, or you have to have dual tubes in my mind. So let's talk about the dual tubes first, then we'll get to the PVS-14. Uh, for navigating at night through various terrain, for the uninitiated, having dual tubes is a really fucking good idea because it allows you to see better than any of these other options. The PVS-14, being in one eye only, is a mixed bag. You still retain your normal night vision in one eye. So for some people, it's better than the PVS-7. For me personally, I don't find that to be true. Uh, to me personally, the PVS-14 in one eye gives me a headache. And you're kind of closing one eye the whole time and you kind of feel like a cyclops. When I have both eyes open with it, I have this mixed image of my normal night vision and the PVS-14, and it's either the best thing ever because you have multispectral vision, or it's the worst headache-inducing nightmare that you really can't see anything, and you end up just closing one eye a lot. When you're going through terrain at night, like, say, the reason to wear dual tubes is because you are going to go and do something, right? Right? The PVS-14 handheld or weapon mounted is good for a fixed position where you are defending. But if you're going to go and do something at night, which I would assume is some sort of assault or reconnaissance or something like that, you need to be able to hike around with this shit on and not make a bunch of fucking noise because it's at night and everything's quiet. And the key to not making a bunch of noise is actually being able to see so you don't step and walk into things or whatever not falling down in the dark this is where dual tubes are real handy uh, there's a lot less learning curve to them the downside is they're they are expensive as fuck for a decent set of dual tubes you're probably talking five to ten thousand dollars depending on the exact setup the set that I used to run around with was a uh, a Sentinel made by AB Night Vision. Uh, it was a set, Sentinel setup with Anvis glass and uh, Anvis tubes and the standard uh, PVS-14 rear glass that most dual tube night vision uses. And those were real nice. It was basically a ground Anvis unit. There's all sorts of options when it comes to dual tubes. In playing around with them, most of them are pretty good. And the added depth, depth perception is nice. The uh, Just being able to see in both eyes, period, is nice. The PVS-7, while cheap, has the downside of not really playing with glasses that well. Uh, it can do okay but it's, it's not the greatest. It's kind of squatty and it has its own unique back lenses and 
it's its own can of fish, really. It's much more preferable to have dual tubes. So for any serious use like that, you're gonna have to pony up that kind of money. But let's talk about the cheaper options because I find those far more interesting because they're actually more attainable. You know, it's cool to have $10,000, that's a night vision, but at the same time, that's a car. You know, that's a not insignificant portion of a house. <laughs> It's a lot of goddamn money. And just m most people are not going to spend that. So either you can be old school cool and run around with a PVS-7 like me. Or you can do the PVS-14 thing. And the PVS-14, while I don't find it valuable as a head-mounted unit, for a fixed position, hey, we're not going to go out and like assault some compound or some sort of shit like that. I'm just worried about watching my own perimeter at night makes a hell of a lot of sense. The amount to put one on a rifle is relatively cheap. Red dots that are night vision capable are relatively cheap and you take an AR-15 and put a red dot on it that has a night vision mode and put a PVS-14 behind it and now you have a night fighting rifle that you're not going to be running around with or whatever but assuming that you have you know fixed uh, defensive positions around your perimeter of whatever it is that you're guarding. You know, having a couple of those, if you're in a large group of people, is a huge force multiplier. And even if you don't use it that way, having your lookouts or whoever, if it's just you by yourself, looking around with a PVS-14 so no one sneaks up on you, you know, use it as a handheld unit and keep it in a pouch on your chest, uh, it's a really good unit. And the, the PVS-14 is among the cheaper night vision units. It's more expensive than the PVS-7, but I don't know. I wouldn't pay more money for a PVS-14 than a PVS-7. I, I find them to be of equal value. So, me personally, I would always go PVS-7 and go helmet mounted and have a laser. Which with the PVS-7 is pretty much your only choice because lining up your Cyclops front end on that thing with a red dot on a rifle is probably just not going to happen. Like you're gonna have to hold the rifle really weird to do that shit. Not saying it can't be done, but you're gonna have to have a laser. And there's plenty of laser aiming units out there, both civilian and military powered. If I was going to spend the money on night vision, I would spend the money on lasers too, which is why this shit gets real expensive because a real PEC-15, I haven't bought one in like five years. So these prices have probably gone up. But when I was buying them, you're talking 1,700 to two grand, something like that. It's, you know, not inexpensive. And difficult to find in the first place unless you know where to look. And uh, as far as where to look, I'd go to gun shows and look around. Sometimes you can find them there. Uh, go to night vision sales forums, like on Facebook groups or AR15.com. Sometimes you'll find them there. Or night vision retail stores. There's a few of those around. Um, I'm not going to name any in particular, but if you find them and ask them about those kind of lasers, they can probably get you the number of someone that could help you with such things. If you don't want to do that because it's breaking the law to have a mill powered laser, which it sort of is, uh, you're left with the civilian units and they're all kind of equally shit. <laughs> like, I forget who makes those. I'm not even gonna mention any brand names on those. It doesn't really matter which one you buy at that point, but go watch YouTube reviews on such things and you'll get a feel of whether it's a quality unit or not. They pretty much all have downsides and they all have the major downside of not having a high powered laser. So, but you can at least aim the fucking gun with them. 
most of them now have some sort of LED illuminator on them too. And I would make sure that whatever LED illuminator I was getting was a good one. The uh, Surefire Vampire lights are particularly good. Um, there's a pistol light that Surefire makes. That's the Surefire, Surefire uh, X300V with an IR laser. And uh, that's a pretty sweet setup to get everything kind of all in one. It's expensive, but all of this shit is. So that's the other caveat with this is you're not just buying the night vision device. That in and of itself is expensive. Then you're going to need some sort of way to mount it to your head and the mount that goes in between. Those are generally expensive, especially for dual tubes. And then you're going to need some sort of uh, laser and light on your rifle that makes sense for fucking IR shit. Those are very expensive. Even the civilian powered units are better part of a thousand dollars most of the time. The uh, the Surefire X300V I was talking about with the IR laser, the one I had I think was six or seven hundred dollars, and that's that's a pretty good bargain in the night vision realm, really. And if you just need something to be able to see and shoot with your fucking gun, well, there you go. That's probably the route that I'll go again whenever I buy night vision again is a PVS-7 and one of those surefire light laser combos. Other considerations. Um... Uh, they pretty much all chew through batteries. The uh, more military units like the PVS-7 or the PVS-14 use double A's. That's a good thing because they're cheap. The dual tubes that I used to have ran on CR-123s. <laughs> that sucks. Most of the lasers run on CR-123s and that kind of sucks too. I think some of the military lasers are now running double A's. I don't know, just be ready to pony up some money, basically. It is the most affordable superpower. But I think I'm going to dedicate the rest of this video to do you even need night vision? And I would put it to you that the vast majority of people do not. You know, it's, it's a sad truth. Um, good high power lights work pretty well. Learning how to do shit in the dark without night vision can work pretty well. Uh, you have natural night vision works pretty well, especially in like mixed lighting from like the outskirts of a city or something like that. When you get in the deep back country and it's dark as shit on a moonless night, well, you'd be wishing you had night vision. The other thing is, if you are watching a perimeter around some group of cabins or some shit at night, whatever you want the scenario to be, I would focus more on being able to hear really well. And whether that's a uh, parabolic listening device or a uh, set of Peltors cranked up, either way, you're probably hearing better than you hear normally. And people moving through the brush at night generally make a lot of noise. Even when you're trying to be quiet. And I guess that's the one cheaper superpower than night vision is super hearing. Because you can get a parabolic microphone for not much money. You probably already have a set of Peltors with electronic hearing. Or something similar. I would buy Peltor and not any of the other brands. Um. Uh, the other high-end brands I don't have any experience with, and all the low-end brands pretty much suck. They don't they don't all suck entirely, but Peltors are not that expensive. I think you can get a set of sport tacks for around a hundred bucks, hundred and fifty bucks. That's that's the direction I would go with that. As far as high powered lights go, uh whether you want to get surefires like me or buy some other brand that's probably going to break. You know, maybe that maybe they don't. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe they fixed those issues. All I know is that uh 
with my experience in weapon lights, I don't trust anything but surefire when it comes to this sort of shit. When it comes to having a flashlight for a survival kit, that's a totally different sort of thing. But when it comes to, you know, this sort of a thing where it's, you know, on guns, night vision, possibly shooting at night, I only buy Surefire. Well, I like Streamlight. Well, I've had a couple Streamlight lights too, and I still have one that's like a pocket light. But all of those weapon lights I ever had, I kind of had issues with, to be honest. Their switch technology just isn't as good as Surefire. If I had all the money in the world, would I have a full night vision set up? Yeah, I would. Like, if you're going to go out and spend a hundred grand on preparations and a bug out vehicle and some cabin in the woods somewhere and like all this shit. I would at least spend a few grand and get a PVS-14 or something. If you're really wanting to be prepared and be, you know, a tactical green beret like Mr. Brassfax, you should get dual tubes. Anything less is just not going to work for that. And all of this shit is going to be worth its weight in gold if anything ever happens. Like... You could probably sell your shit in the event of the end of the world and have a 2 million percent return on your investment. Like, what's a set of dual tubes worth in Ukraine right now? It's probably considerable. I'm kind of hesitant to just say everyone should buy night vision because in reality... You have to know how to fucking operate it and maintain it. You have to know how to navigate at night with it on, which is not a frivolous thing. It's something that takes some getting used to because you can't really see where you walk. You have to plan your route, you know, five, six, seven feet out. Either that or you're looking right at the ground the whole time. The way the night vision works is sort of like holding toilet paper tubes up to your eyes. Or looking through a pair of binoculars. Like, you can't really see like you normally do. Like, you can just glance down with your eyes and see what's in front of you. If you're looking ahead to see potential threats or whatever, the closest you can see to you on the ground is probably like seven or eight feet away. Maybe you can look down a little bit and make that five or six feet away. If you look down all the way to see directly where you're stepping... Like, that's just kind of not good at all. You might as well not be wearing night vision. And, uh, honestly, going through obstacles at night in night vision that you aren't used to wearing, that's a good recipe to end up in the emergency room in one way or another. You have a bunch of shit on your head that, uh, crank your neck in weird directions and whatever and I've seen people get neck injuries from wearing head mounted night vision it's not that hard to do I've seen people using it to ride bicycles at night and get in horrible fucking crashes where they broke their fucking legs and shit I've seen people on night hikes in night vision take a tumble down a fucking hill and have to go to the emergency room to get checked out like it's something that you should really take some time with and get to know your piece of equipment and know what you're doing with it before you ever try to really use the damn thing. And that can be accomplished, but it's probably not going to be readily accomplished just playing around in your backyard with it at night. Although that's pretty fun too, to be honest. And at least that'll get you used to wearing it and used to like how the modes and how it works and when it shuts off and when it doesn't. And some of the ones now have uh, auto off features and stuff and various different things that you really want to like vet this shit out and make sure it works and works well before you ever really try to use it. Especially if you're buying some crazy shit from China, which is on the market now. Uh, 
that's more of where you see the weird modes and things. The military issue night vision, like PVS 14s and PVS 7s, and even some of the dual tube units. The craziest thing they have in them is like a sensor that detects if the unit's tilted or not. And they're usually some sort of analog sensor that really works. It's not like an accelerometer or some shit. You see that sort of shit on the Chinese units. So I would avoid those pretty much all together. And when it comes to generation of night vision, anything Gen 2 and up is probably usable. Uh, Gen 3 is preferable and Gen 4 night vision, at least as of when I was selling it, didn't really exist. There was Gen 3 thin film and shit like that that people were kind of starting to call Gen 4. Ignore that, like, the upper end of Gen 3 night vision is more than plenty for you. Like I said, for most people, Gen 2 is probably even good enough. And all of that has to do with the clarity of what you're seeing. Any of it makes you see better in the dark than you probably do with your natural eyesight. That's about all I have to say about that, but uh, I figured somebody would want to hear it. If you do own night vision, what did you buy? And uh, how much did you, did you spend on it? And not just the night vision itself, but everything you need to use that unit. I'd be very interested to hear that. There's ways to cheap out on some of that, like getting military surplus shit or whatever, but if you really are going to go the dual tube route, a lot of that shit just kind of goes out the window, you know. There's there's very few Wilcox mounts out there that are fucking Millsurp or whatever. You probably just have to buy one. And as someone who's bought a Wilcox mount before, that shit fucking hurts. You know, you're spending five hundred dollars on a fucking aluminum widget that holds one thing to another thing that isn't even something you can fucking enjoy, really. So I'll see you guys later.